friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise, and this is my beautiful but shy corn snake frostbite. Today I'm going to take you through a tour of his specially designed brand new enclosure, and a walkthrough of the build so you can do one of your own. Like most of my enclosures, this is a fully bioactive setup. I prefer bioactive tanks for my reptiles for four main reasons. One, it is natural enrichment for your reptile. Fast growing plants like these pothos are ever growing, giving them new perches, shady places, or roots around their enclosure. Even the isopods crawling around give them something new to watch every day. There's nothing wrong with regular substrate, plastic plants, and other tank enrichment items but I prefer the look and feel of real plants, rocks, and branches. Two, cleanup is easier. I remove poops and urates, but anything that I happen to miss is food for the isopods and springtails, and it enriches the soil, which fertilizes the plants. The plants also help minimize odors too. Once established, this becomes a fully self-sustaining little ecosystem that requires very little maintenance. I don't have to replace the substrate monthly, which saves money too, and is great, because my dad is cheap. Nothing out of you for that? You're just gonna accept that? It's not wrong. Yeah. Three, they look great. Not only do my tanks provide a safe and enriching home for my reptiles, but each enclosure is a tiny, unique piece of nature in my home. Four, pet safety. Do you have a dog or cat who sees the plants on your windowsill as a 24-hour salad bar? Because I do. And his name is Oscar. I love plants, and I love Oscar. And I'm sure that Oscar loves me too. But he also loves eating the plants. And a lot of the plants he nibbles on can make him sick. By having our plants safely locked away in the enclosures, we don't have to worry about Oscar's health or the health of the plants. Now, I put a lot of effort into building nice, big, roomy homes for my reptiles. I firmly believe that you should provide the biggest appropriately sized home you can with adequate hides and cover, of course. This is a 20 gallon tank, which generally speaking is too small for an adult corn snake. Maybe even one that's still pretty little like frostbite. So why do I keep frostbite in such a cozy home? Well, every snake is different. You may find that what works for 99.9% .9 of the snakes out there might not actually work for your individual. That's the case with frostbite, whose morph is snow, which as you can see means he is completely white. It is very unlikely that a mutation like this would survive in the wild, as it would be almost impossible for him to camouflage, and he would get snapped up by a predator pretty darn quickly. I don't know if on some level he's aware that he practically glows in the dark and that makes him insecure, or if he just happens to have a nervous disposition. But Frostbite is a scaredy cat, so he burrowed into the soil. And that's where he stayed. This made him pretty destructive to a bioactive enclosure. See, no matter how many hides or branches we gave him, or leaves, that I put in for cover, he'd still just end up living in the soil. It would be a week or more at a time between sightings, and this often meant that we would have to dig him up in order to feed him, which can be stressful and also disrupts the plants, the layers of the soil, and the cleanup crew. He even got down under the ground cloth into the drainage layer. The soil and the drainage layer are supposed to be separated, but he moved the ground cloth around so much that they mixed together which gives you a kind of muddy, soupy mix on the bottom of the tank. It's not cool. No. He is the definition of a dirt noodle. When he's out of his tank, he's gentle and sweet and explores like any other corn snake. But in his enclosure, when he's not underground, he gets quite defensive and will often tail buzz, go into a strike pose, even actually strike. Unless he was underground, he was not secure. When he got bigger, we tried different things, including moving him into a bigger enclosure. This one was not bioactive, but it had tons of cover for him. And he still hid constantly. 
and was even more defensive and started skipping meals. So we moved him back into the smaller setup and my dad and I started working on a plan. His original enclosure was one of the very first bioactive homes that we ever set up. And it was pretty basic, level terrain, no backing. There was decor, but it was just kind of eh, whatever. We've learned a lot after, I don't know, 15 builds. And there's a lot we now know that we can do to make his enclosure much better, we hope. Our plan here was to give Frostbite a variety of surfaces, levels, and objects to encourage him to stay out and explore. We got the usual hides for him to take cover in, but we wanted to be strategic in how it was all placed and set up in a way that could allow him to do his thing without being seen if he didn't want to be. We've got the back and side walls built out of spray foam, silicone, and dirt. We've integrated this cork tube right here that serves as a hide and also a corridor to remain invisible as he moves across the tank. There are ledges on the backing here along here that allow him to get up off the ground, but they're close to his shelters all over the tank for him to duck into. We've got the regular hot and cold hides that he can move back and forth between them using the tube or the branches and the rocks and this bushy, bushy plant for cover. We've got this sort of terrace little rock garden back here that gives him another surface to explore and also lets him kind of wiggle hunker down through the cracks. This pothos is going to be a big part of the cozy feel of the tank. Eventually, it just needs to grow a bit. This is a snippet from the pothos in the plains garter tank and it has completely overtaken the enclosure. By covering the whole enclosure, the plains have virtually unlimited paths around their tank and they love zipping through the canopy as much as they do on the ground. Assuming that this takes off, this will provide frostbite with all sorts of cover as well as providing safe climbing stimulation. I can't wait. We have some standard bits of decor that goes in most tanks, but like I said earlier, we've been a little bit more strategic in making sure we position them to provide hiding places and cover. Then there's the leaf litter, bits of bark, that kind of thing. I will do a quick recap of the steps. If you just want to skip all that and go right to the did it work reveal, you can jump here. Okay, first thing was building the back and sides with spray foam. Just spray it on incorporating any decor like the cork tube and the branch. I build up the areas where I might want to have a ledge. FYI, if you go overboard, it's not a big deal because you can always just trim away the excess foam when you start the carving process. Once the foam is fully cured, be it a couple of hours to a day depending on the brand, you decorate. I coated this with brown silicone and then applied some cocoa fiber substrate and some moss and rocks here and there. You can just kind of use whatever substrate you want. Sand, gravel, tropical soil. It just depends on the look you're going for. As the foam was curing and expanding, it looked like it was gonna swallow up this stick here, so I kind of flattened that down a bit, and it ended up looking a bit like a rock. So, instead of coating that section, I just painted it with acrylic paint and some clear coat. Again, let it sit and allow all the silicone, the paint, the whatever, to cure and dry completely. Next was the drainage layer. I tried something new here. Because of frostbite getting into the drainage layer, I decided to enclose the layer of ceramic bio balls we used for the drainage layer entirely in the screen instead of just putting that screen on top. I also sealed it in place with some spray foam so that frostbite can't worm his way under the whole thing. Not sure how that's gonna work, but I'm hopeful. But you are creative. Mm-hmm. Substrate goes in next. A mix of organic black earth, eco earth, cocoa fiber, and sand with some crushed up leaves and snake skin mixed in for the cleanup crew to eat. Plants and decor, again, arranged to give multiple secure roots to various parts of the enclosure. Then the LED lights went back in, and then I just painted the sides where you could see the ugly spray from through the sides. 
of the glass and voila all done so did it work the goal here was to provide frostbite with a home that is enriching and secure enough so that he stops living underground and i can actually see my beautiful corn snake feed and interact with him more easily but most importantly to reduce his stress well frostbite has been in here for a month and so far no digging it appears that he has done no burrowing into his substrate Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Every single time we've peeked into his tank, he is either in one of his hides, in the back cork tube, or even out along one of the ledges or in his plant. We even found him in his little rock garden. We offered him food the day after we moved him in, and he ate immediately and has not missed a meal since. What's more is that he is moving from hide to hide regularly. We often find him in completely different spots whenever we check. When we do go into his enclosure, we don't get the defensive behavior that we got before. Instead, he will actually often approach my hand. He is more visible than he has ever been, more interactive, exploring his home, and he seems much less stressed. I'd say that this was a huge success. Like I said earlier, this may not be the most suitable size for most corn snakes, but it is what frostbite needs. Some snakes are pretty laid back and can happily live anywhere. But in some cases, the enclosure is what makes the snake. If you have a snake that seems uncharacteristically anxious or defensive, a change to a cozier setup like this might just be the ticket. Eventually, we will probably have to do something like this with a slightly bigger tank because Frostbite still does have some growing to do. But for now, I am so happy with how this worked. What do you think of Frostbite's new home? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you liked the tour, please hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button and turn on the notifications. You know, usual YouTube stuff. Follow me on Insta and Facebook. But most importantly, remember to nurture all nature. See you next time. Bye. Goodbye. I'll run through a quick... I will run through a quick recap. Uh, oh, wow. I'm going to do a whole episode like this, I think. Hi, friends. Welcome to the old Canadian reptile girl with me, Annalise, and Oscar. What can I throw in here? Nothing. There's rocks. Don't throw rocks at your father. Um Don't throw. <laughs> it's a tiny piece of bark. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw it at you. Don't throw it at me. Expensive camera. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Alright. Just by squish him. Man. <laughs> All right, I'll put it here. <laughs>